What's up everybody, this is Jack Sputnik and I'm very happy to see you guys on my channel to see your happy faces because we are going to be talking about something that I really really love and this is cinematic settings, cinematic footage from your camera and what's more important, however I use Sony system, we will be talking about all the systems so no matter what system you have, if you have, I don't know, Pentax a lot of Pentax users are always angry with me that I never mention it, so I do mention if you have Pentax or if you have uh, Canon, you have Sony, you have Nikon, whatever system, Olympus, Panasonic you have, you can achieve very beautiful looking cinematic footage if you just follow the simple steps that I will show you after intro. Okay, so you may be worried, oh, I have older type of camera or whatever I have, like, I don't know, like older Canon or the older Nikon, I won't be able to do that. So the good news is that really most of cameras out there, even if they don't record 4K, just 1080p, are just very good to get cinematic looking footage. To give you an example, one of my friends that is a movie operator, uh, for many years have used uh, Canon 5D Mark II. It was a first, you know, the DSLR video shooting camera and this camera produced awesome results if you know how to use it and if you knew how, what like traps to avoid. But let's get straight to the point. So what you will need to achieve cinematic results on your camera. So one of the first things you really need is this filter. This is variable ND filter. What does it mean? That you can change, that you can change the density of that filter. So you can make it, as you see, you can make it brighter or darker, just pulling this little knob here. It's organized differently depending, oh, I hear the sound of it. Can you hear that? There's some uh, sand because I'm living in Portugal and uh, my equipment is always like in touch with sand. So anyways, you see, you can darken the picture and lighten the picture. And why do you need that filter? Of course, remember to check your filter thread. So how big is uh, your lens to understand what kind of filter you need. Of course, if you buy bigger filter, you can then uh, use it through like converters, this step up or step down converters on smaller lenses. So this is the filter you need. And why do you need this filter? A little bit of theory, but don't be scared. Nothing super professional, no strange words. So you want to use 180 degree rule. I said no strange word and I'm saying 180 degree rule. What is it? You can forget about this name. Basically what you want to do is shoot in 24 frames per second. So you go to cinema, you want to sh see your favorite movie and the frame rate you will see this movie in is 24 frames per second. And if you shoot in 24 frames per second, which gives you this nice cinematic look, you don't want to have this mechanical look of high shutter speed, which you can see right now. What you want to do, you want to have as you move your, you know, uh, hands or, you know, fingers, head, whatever. If you see some movement, you want to have a little bit of a motion blur, okay? That's why you want to keep, so you want to stick to 24 frames per second and you want to have your shutter speed set to 1 50th of a second. And if I'm shooting at a studio and I had adjust and I can adjust my light and I can control the environment, I don't need this filter very much. But if you go outside and you have like much brighter light, like direct sunlight, for example, and you want to keep 1 50th of a second, even at the lowest ISO value, you need to, you see, put sunglasses on your camera so that you can stick to this rule, 24 frames per second, 1 50th of a second. You just make it darker for your camera and you're good to go, okay? Some, um, some filters allow you to go up to eight steps down with when it comes to darkness. You can buy stronger filters over eight steps or even over 10 steps. 
um, that will give you much darker density and this is good to have them both because in super bright conditions this filter will not be enough to keep it at 1 50th of a second and to give you this motion blur that you want okay so let me show you real quick how to set it in your camera so when you look at uh, my sony now right now I'm, I'm setting it on sony but really this rule works on every single camera you talk we talk about okay i go here to function menu and I switch, and I'm, I'm in a video mode here, on the stop dial button, I switch to video mode. Then I put my hand, like, like, I don't know, like, I put my menu on the screen. And here from this menu, I am selecting, instead of automatic exposure, I'm setting manual exposure. Because you want to stick to this 180 degree rule. No exception, okay? So you put manual mode on, if, it, if it's Canon or Nikon, whatever, you just want manual mode video recording and you want to set your uh, shutter speed to 150. It's already set to 150, you see? So not 140, not 160, but 150th of a second. So this is the shutter speed you want. And, uh, and you want to see what kind of recording you have set in your menu. So you go to video recording menu here okay i press menu and then i go to file format i have 4k in this case because it's available on sony a7 III, and then i switch to 24 frames in this case i was on 24 frames per second on 60 megabits per second because i was shooting wedding so i didn't need that much data but i want to switch to 24 frames per second to stop 100, 100 megabits per second which gives me the best quality I can get out of Sony a7 III. In case of different cameras, this can be, you know, different, but basically you want to select 24p, 24 frames per second. And most of the cameras nowadays allow you to do that um, and, and you can, you're good to go. So 24 frames per second, then you can see 1 50th of a second and then the rest of the parameters are just there for you to you know to adjust according to the amount of light you have so um, to get very cinematic results it's one important information here to mention is you don't want f-stop to be too high why because f-stop is responsible for depth of field okay so if you go up with your f-stop to let's say f11 or f16 everything is sharp which for some shots is very good but if you want to get this cinematic look this you know um, beautiful looking image you want to have some shallowness of this depth of field some separation of your model or object from the background okay so you don't want to go too high in this case i have uh, a cheap Sony lens. This is 50 millimeters, 1.8 millimeter prime lens, so I can go all the way up to 1.8. Uh, let me show you. So I can go 1.8 here. So you see, we have f-stop of 1.8, 1 40th of a second. So probably if I want to shoot in, during the day, I will need to go as low as possible with the ISO to reduce the amount of light that is you know, um, seen by the sensor inside of the camera. I hope it doesn't sound complicated, but you can just, you don't have to even like fully understand what's going on here. It's just, if you just follow these rules, you, you got the settings. So 1 50th of a second, 24 frames per second. You want to open your um, lens wide as far as it is possible for your ND filter. You want to reduce the amount of light coming into your camera with this variable and the uh, filter and you're good to go. And the reason I said that you want to have like two types of filters, maybe darker model two, because if you go 1.8 in a full, you know, in a fully bright day, in a full sunlight, this will not be enough. You will need a darker version of this filter. So it's good to have because this is not expensive. It is cheap. 
It is easy to use. I have some recommendations in the description below that you can, that I really recommend. I think that uh, those lenses are not lenses, but uh, filters are really not that expensive and very good quality. And you're good to go in any situation you ever imagine. Okay, so bright day, you can still stick to that rule and you can adjust the amount of light coming into your lens, just pulling this knob left and right. Okay, and that's pretty much it. This is how you get cinematic look. Shallow depth of field, 24 frames per second. You stick to 1 50th of a, a second of shutter speed just to keep this you know, motion blur visible. And this, is, this will look very good on every camera. And if you have more advanced camera, you may think, oh, okay, you didn't mention, you didn't mention, for example, picture profiles. Like I use picture profile HLG2 on Sony cameras because it's available. I have it, so I use it. And this is very good thing to, to you know, process your, your, your footage. But a lot of cameras that you guys have, they just don't have picture profiles. So there's one more pro tip from me for all the cameras, for all the systems. Most of the cameras and systems I know and I can even think of have one thing in common. So I go again to my menu and I have creative style, picture profile. It, it depends, the name depends on the producer or is it Canon or Nikon or whatever it is or Pentax or Olympus or Panasonic. Uh, what's more there, or Sigma, FP or whatever. Uh, you have this creative style or picture profile uh, thing, not picture profile because picture profile is reserved in Sony for the, you know, these flat profiles, but some kind of um, picture settings. And if you want to get as flat profile as possible, I usually recommend to use a uh, standard profile and just go down with contrast from zero, not plus one, not plus two, not plus three, but go all the way down to minus three. So if you reduce the contrast on your camera to the lowest possible in case of um, Canon, to the lowest possible in case of Nikon, to the lowest possible in case of Sony, then you get this extra dynamic range, we can say. So even if you a little bit overexposed your image or a little bit underexposed your image, you can still get some reasonably looking footage and, uh, you know, in post-production, in your program of choice, in your software of choice, you can correct this picture a little bit, add a little bit of uh, colors, tweak your colors a little bit to make this footage look just right. And all the time while I'm talking, you could see some of the B-roll examples of me doing that in real life, doing some, uh, you know, cinematic footage with uh, these settings using Sony and uh, using just standard profile, no professional picture profiles uh, applied there. And, uh, you know, we've added lots that, uh, my favorite lots that, that I really like to use. You can achieve great results without a lot of hassle. And honestly, most of the time for YouTube videos, for example, I just use standard profile from Sony camera with this contrast down and that's totally enough for me. If I want to go more crazy, then I will use this HLD G2. And a very important disclaimer, um, this tutorial is, is, is basic, it's just my um, idea to give you a tool to work with, to give you like initial settings that you can start with. And of course, you may want to use a slow motion pictures, a slow motion shots in your B-roll on your YouTube channel or in your client work. And of course, this is also very good. But um, this is my basic settings. This is what I start with. If I'm shooting wedding, if I'm shooting some, some you know, corporate videos or I'm shooting for YouTube, this is the settings I always start with. If you guys have any suggestions what should be added to this tutorial or if you want to see some of the tutorials, video making tutorials in the future and you want to know more, please don't forget to subscribe and please don't forget to leave thumbs up and please don't forget to write some comments to let me know what should be the next subject, what should be the next tutorial. I always include your uh, suggestions from the comments below. Once again, this is Jack Sputnik, and I see you guys, of course, in the next episode. Okay, one more thing that I forget to mention, and I really want to mention that I will be doing some video on the classic lenses, on old lenses like these Asahi Pentax old type of lens or this Russian Zenit lens, 55 millimeter. 
And why am I mentioning those lenses and why are they here in this recording? It's because if you want to get like even more of this cinematic look, and if you are not afraid, which I do recommend not to be afraid of, manual focus, then you can achieve some amazing results using these old lenses. They are not as predictable as new lenses, specifically, I don't know, from Sony or Canon, you know, these high-end lenses, by far. But this, you know, like, um, element of surprise and, um, and some, some, some effects that you get on these lenses are just surprising and you can get some stunning results just using these old guys through converters. As, I, as you see, you have, I have M42 converter to Sony E-mount. You can buy these converters to practically any system out there. And the results you get with those guys are really awesome. And I do recommend to experiment with that. So this is some extra tip that I forgot before. I always forget about something, but it's probably kind of my personality. I was like that since I remember, since now I was a little kid, not from the table, maybe from the ground like that. Okay, so, sorry. But hey, now for sure, see you next episode, okay? See you guys.